right, we'll call this meeting of the administrative committee to order. Okay, as you can see, Mr. Lino is not here. He is still doing some convalescing, but everything has gone well. He assures us and sooner, I hope he'll be back. Um, all right, establish a quorum. We'll call. Ann Osted? Here. Ken Fisher? Here. Susan Kohout? Here. Nancy Robillard? Here. Richard Verley? Here. Joel Gunlickson? Here. David Lino? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Also moved. Second. Any other things? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes, uh, Madam Chairperson. Second. Okay. Any corrections? Um, then all in favor of approving those minutes? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Any correspondence? Nothing. Public comment. <clears throat> Do we have anyone? We have people that are online. Um, if you'd like to speak. If you could please um, raise your hand if you're, I guess, on a computer, there's a way to raise your hand. And if you're on the phone, which we don't, but you can do a star three. I guess I'll ask three times if there's anyone who would like to speak, they can raise their hand. For the second time, is there anyone who would like to speak? And for the third and final time, is there anyone who would like to speak? We're good. Okay. Thank you. I have a question on that. Now, I'm, I'm being serious here. Yep. Before, at different meetings, we'd always have people, not always, but so often you have people, and a lot of times they were the same person, but we had public participation. Now, because it's done virtually, basically, uh, it, we're not having that. I guess my question is, are those people not interested or are they finding it too difficult under this premise? Or is it a case that because they can't be on camera, they're not interested? I mean, I don't really have a good answer for that. I'm, I'm being serious. I, I, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm, cause I'm curious on this. I do know it just depends on the committee meeting, what's on the agenda. So I know there have been other committees where we do have active public participation. Oh, yeah. so I guess it depends on the meeting and the content. So not like this one's not an interesting meeting to be at, but I don't, I don't think there's a content that they're willing to comment on right now on this agenda. Okay. I, I would add to that too, that I do think it, because I've been on at committee meetings where there has been, and there are a lot of people who have said they really like that yep. this is virtual now because they are watching meetings they could have never gotten to. So I hope it's making it easier. Um, no old business. So we'll start with the business. The first is the county board vacant supervisor seat. Um, Mr. Lino asked that I relate to you. You all know that Aaron Towser. Um, resigned, and I believe her letter was forwarded to everybody. Um, and Ken sent out a notice that letters of application are due by the end of the day on the 17th, I think. Right. And then there will be interviews early in January, and Chairman Lino will make a recommendation to be approved at the January County Board meeting. Anything else? Okay, County Administrator. Okay, so Grant and I will actually take you through, I guess, some of these items. I'll cover the easy one first. We did submit um, the last reimbursement for the CARES Act funding. We actually, if you recall, we had about $675,000 that we qualified for. What was odd is at the end, they actually suggested that we uh, submit all of our expenses, even if it exceeds that. So I think we actually submitted, oh, I think Steve's online, but I think we're close to like 900000 and we did submit that in, and now we're just waiting for response because there were a lot of communities that weren't leveraging the CARES funding. So there's a possibility that we might get reimbursed the entire amount, which would be pretty amazing. So we don't have any final verification on that, but we'll report that uh, should it occur both here and at, at uh, finance. Uh, just in terms of our operations, uh, when we had started all this, we had put together a whole series of resolutions 
And at that time, we had just kind of put them together in terms of expiring on December 31st. So we just went through and Grant put together all of the, I guess, background information. So you'll have our, if you can start on page five, you'll see that we have our initial state of emergency that we declared. That one really didn't have about 10 days in it. So we're still active under our state of emergency. But then if you go back through, there's a couple of items that are actually date sensitive. On page seven, there's the Family First Response Act. That one's more in regards to the federal leave policies. And as of this point in time, we've not heard anything in terms of an extension. For us, that changed recently. I haven't heard anything yet. No, it's not been extended. Okay, so as of right now, that has not been extended, but we put it on the agenda because we weren't quite sure if we we're going to hear something or not. But in any case, if that would obviously be extended, that's something that we'd have to update after the fact. So I just want to have that in there for reference, but you'll actually see. Uh, well, on page, it's on page seven, but lines uh, 10, 11, and 12 that actually shows you will expire on a date of December 31st. So that's why we wanted to include it on the agenda for that. Then if you go to uh, page eight, this is where we have um, against the supplemental policies in terms of, again, some of the paid sick leave that we put together in response to this. But again, on this one, you actually see in page nine, the effective date and expiration date. Again, on this case was December 31st. And that again reflects that policy that's related to the resolution itself. This is not this is not SPL though, correct? This no, it's purely the federal and uh, what we would anticipate doing is subject to the uh, federal government getting fit to extend this would bring it forward either in December to the county board or through this committee again in January to the county board in January to uh, extend it. But as Ken and I have, have indicated, the uh, existing benefits and uh, the related policies are going to sunset December 31st. Then if you go to I guess page 10. We again established a temporary policy to allow teleworking. And again, the actual resolution is on page 10, but then the policy itself is on page 11 and 12. And in this case, there is no, uh, I guess, it's expiration, sorry, expiration date. But we just wanted to let you know that that's still a policy that's on the books and active. So this one we will continue on beyond December 31st, in other words, it'll stay active until we pull it back. So I just wanted to kind of walk these through with you. Uh, the next item is on page 13. You'll see the resolution is as it relates to our first responders and public safety operations. And again, that one, we actually did have an expiration date, uh, September 16th through the 31st. And again, that's their ability to use their, I guess, the federal leave and again, on this one, it's actually broken up to two parts. One is the federal leave, and then also the supplemental leave that we provided up to at 80 hours. So this will be one of those ones we want to look at or to not look at in terms of extending because we have to tie to the federal. We're going to not. No, actually, we, we have exempted the uh, first responders and the public safety positions from the federal leave. Correct. And this one deals with the supplemental paid leave and the I think the appropriate thing to do is to forward this on to the county board next week to extend it uh, beginning January 1, 2021 uh, through uh, the end of the year or through the uh, end of the uh, emergency situation. We're not going to add any time. It'll just allow the First responders and public safety uh, employees to use the time that was allotted to them by the resolution. So we would need a motion for that. Yes. Yep. Anything else? No, not for that. It's easier just to kind of walk through one at a time for all of yep. Do you want to? Do you want a motion to extend this and present it to the county board? Please. I'll I'll make that motion. Do a second. Okay. Okay, any questions or comments? So, what's the purpose of limiting it just to full time employees versus anybody that's working for the county on behalf of the county? 
I think that's a Kelly question. Kelly, did, did you? This is. Um, Can you share Mike, Kelly? Mike? This is the federal leaf. Correct. So this is. No, no, no. This is supplemental. supplemental. Remember, we exempted the uh, first responders of public safety from the federal leaf. This is our supplemental paid leave. For 80 hours. Correct. So, are we making a motion then to send this federal, or should we be making? Is our, our motion should be to send the thing we're doing, right? The motion is to extend resolution twenty twenty dash eighty four supplemental PSB. Okay. 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 So, can you answer Joel's question then? I guess my question, ultimate question, would be is. If anybody's working for the economy in any capacity, I know this is talking about first responders and medical people, but if anybody's working part time or whatever it is, if they're working for the county and they're getting a county paycheck and they catch something and get it while on the job, why aren't they covered? They are. They are? Yes. If they are in the line of duty and contract COVID, it is workers' compensation and they file. Okay. 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 And just because it's in full time. Yes, and, and this is um, an extension of the one that was handed out the March 16, 2020 supplement, which does cover all. Okay, any other questions? All right, then all in favor of sending this to county board to be extended, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Can I, can I say one thing for clarification? Because this is for the protected staff. What about the SPL for the GE? Was it not set to expire too? Is that carrying over? No, 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 expiration. Okay, so, okay, so I just want to make sure we're So, okay, so we're good, we're good on that aspect. Okay, so. So I'm just going to go now just in terms of. The next one item, this is the county administrators, this is the operational status for the treasurer's department. And that's going to just, what I'm just going to do is maybe just talk about the work chart I passed out. And also Ryan is here as well. Um, so we did need, again, we gave a little bit of an update last month. We did need, and we went through and refined some of the ideas. But in essence, what we're doing is they'll see, I guess we consider the current work chart. And under the current org chart, I guess the things to point out, if you look under, I guess, land use services, and then you look at the land information, that yellow box, you'll see there's three positions. There's the real property listed, the GIS technician, and the LIO. The, under the county treasurer, under the current org chart, you'll see the county treasurer, and then you have like your chief deputy. If you look at the then the proposed egg, uh, the, egg, the proposed organizational chart, you'll see what we're proposing to do is again looking under the land information, you'll see that the GIS technician was removed from the org chart. But then what we did is we actually under the county treasurer we have the chief deputy slash tax lister. So in essence, if you look at the, the existing GIS technician, their duties were the tax listing. And they did the GIS work. And most of the GIS work was the addressing for the county. I'd say that, you know, if you divide it in half, 50% was the tax listing, 50% GIS. Of that 50%, probably most of that was all in the, in the addressing. A lot of the other events, it is either kind of automated or staff can still do that themselves. Um, or again, in this case, what we're doing is we're transferring those mapping functions to the LIO. So the LAO has capacity to handle those duties. And that's why we're, we're taking the tax listing duties and we're putting it back with the position of the chief deputy slash tax listing. So this is what the proposal will be uh, for our operations right now, just because of the tax collection, we actually have um, Jay and Ryan separated. So I think Ryan's right now, you're still working up in the finance department. This again, because we need to make sure we have that office functional in case something happens with a COVID test. Uh, but what we're hoping to do is starting on December 15th, Ryan, is that still correct? It's the start date. So on the 15th, we're going to have Chris Mould move her office uh, downstairs. 
And the reason why we're doing that on the 15th is just to start one, to give us some opportunity to learn the system, but also that's when the tax collections were expecting people to start coming in to pay their tax bills. So we need capacity for that. But then what we'll do is we'll actually make it, I guess, effective once Ryan takes office, which is on January 4th, I believe. It's the day he's sworn in. And then what we're hoping to do, um, I'm going to jump down just a little bit under the human resources. We can come back and cover those. But we're hoping that we'll have the, a resolution that in January that will be official, adopted by the county board, just adopting this org chart along with the position changes uh, that are being proposed under the human resources. So what we did is we actually updated um, the changes to the real property list position and also the deputy treasurer position. And those are just updates in the job description. So we bring that to admin to the county. But then what we'll do is we'll bundle everything, the org chart, the position changes, and we'll bring that to the county board as a resolution to make it official. But just for this month, I just wanted to give you an update of where we're going and the discussions that we've had and what we're doing in the meantime to kind of get this in place. I don't know if there's any questions or comments. Or you know, Ryan's here too. Do you have any questions for him? Anyone have questions? Which of these positions is Chris Moe's position right now? The GIS technician. So you don't need any action from us, just that we hear it. There was a discussion right now, and if you had any red flags or any questions for Ryan or I or Kelly, we were able to, I guess, address them. Otherwise, more will continue to put this all together, and then again, we'll bring it all to you next month. As far as your final endorsement as a recommendation to county board. Yeah, uh, Dan? Yeah, I was always going to understand that the treasurer and the clerk of court and the county clerk were able to appoint their own deputy in charge, you know, second in charge by themselves. Yep. Yeah. Is this still the case? Oh, yeah, he still has the right to do it. We had that discussion. So right now we're moving her down there. So then again, it's procedurally. So unfortunately, Jay actually never officially appointed or sworn in. Ryan in this case, but he always served in that function. Okay. So in this case, we're trying to work with Ryan up front to say we'd like to bring her down, make sure everything works, and then hopefully, you know, if it heads down the right path, that that be the natural selection that officially appoint that person. I mean, the only thing, I guess my thing is that we, again, I'm, I'm being positive, but because we've been discussing it, so I, I think we're trying to start everything off on a positive foot. I mean, I, mean, I, I guess the hammer on our side is that we're funding the position, so. So they can appoint someone, but we also can decide whether or not we're going to pay for the position or how we're going to pay for the position or the salary for the position. So I think it's better that we're looking in cooperation and trying to put this together. And that's what we're trying to do. So, but yeah, but technically they they, they actually appoint their, their chief deputy. So now if you had an election three years from now and Brian and whoever gets put out and someone comes in on their own that we never heard of, that person still would have the right to appoint this person or not appoint it? Or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. The elected position is right to appoint their deputy. But you're going to, but there probably would be a fact that you wouldn't um, fund it, right? Well, <laughs> that's what I'm reading out of this. Well, again, I think, I think that's where, I mean, yeah, I mean, if there's a negative situation, yeah, you'd have that discussion on how you fund a position and stuff like that. But I think our whole idea with this case. And with Ryan, we're trying to get in front of it. We had discussions and say, you know, if it works out and we can get this right, I mean, it's it's still Ryan's authority to make that appointment, but if we can get this to work out in the right direction, I think it's a win-win for everybody. So, And just for the fact that Ryan and Chris ran against each other, there could be some animosity in there. I mean, let's face it, I see that up in yep. my old office when I left. Um, I mean, that's then what happens if he and her can't get along and then Chris is out the door or <laughs> what happens? Well, again, that's all, I guess, items that we are aware of in the back of our minds, but I think we've gone through enough meetings because we had some, we've had discussions with Ryan, we've had discussions with Chris, both in terms of expectations and reporting and working relationships. So, again, I guess what we're trying to do is we had some of those discussions that we think right now. Just based off our discussions and how things are going, it's been going smoothly and there's been open communication. So, I mean, could it go a wire? Yes, it could, but I guess what we're trying to do is, I guess, be positive and see if we can make this work first for everybody. So, but no duly noted, it can happen. 
And I think Ryan, you brought the same concern in, in terms of that in your authority. So, but we've had those discussions. So. Well, as long as nobody was drawn on it, I don't have too much of a problem. Yeah. Other questions? Thanks, Ryan. Did you have, want to add anything or? Okay, um, if there's nothing else, then we can continue. Have we already done a resolutions piece? Yep. Okay, so transportation. Um, sure, so Pam's going to give an update, but I'm also going to share the screen. So maybe Grant, did you um, hit the light? Yeah, you didn't come out to front 10 or just from here. Yeah, you can do that from there. It's fine. Okay. Just make sure you got the mic going. So. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So in my last um, updates, the last few months, I had mentioned that we were looking at rebranding the ADR C bus and van service. In working with brilliant marketing and communication, um, Brooke suggested that we actually have an umbrella um, brand or name and then subset programs for the ADRC system and the door-to-door -door ride system. So what I would like to show you today and hopefully um, after the meeting, um, some of you will have some ideas to, to bring to me. Um, but there are three logos um, that um, we'll try to put up on the screen. So what Brooke came up with at Brilliant Marketing and Communication was the Door County Transportation Department's um, name and logo. She gave us three options. So on that screen, it's showing all three of them. Um, so basically, the Door County Transportation Department would become Door County Connect is the proposed name at this point in time, along with those three logos. And then Door to Door Rides could have a new name, and it would be listed as a subset. So um, and if you want to bring up one of the screens that has one of the logos on. Yeah, I'm trying to get that for you. Oh, okay. Um, you'll see once um, we're looking at one logo, there's um, on the bottom of the logo, one will say shared taxi service. Another one will say public transit. Those are actually um, examples of perhaps where door-to-door -door rides or shared ride taxi or some sort of name of the door-to-door -door system would fall. And then, for example, the bottom right, it says public transit. That could be a new name for the ADRC service. Um, it could also be other ideas like community link or ride with us, that kind of thing. Um, so again, we're, we began this uh, rebrand project for the ADRC because Right now, it's A, got the wrong phone number on it um, from the updates that we made, and B, ADRC leads to um, an um, interpretation that the system is only for um, the aging population or individuals with disabilities, which is not the case. It is actually part of the public transit system, even though those are our primary riders. So what I'm hoping, um, again, is to give you an overview of the three logo options, along with the um, proposed name for the North County Transportation Department, again, which would be North County Connect. On uh, the screen right now is option number one. Um, what Brooke and her team really tried to do was kind of bring out um, some of the blues, like water for the peninsula, also, you'll see in this logo, and then um, if you want to go to number 210, um, you'll see that she kind of went with that again, but also the circles, which, you know, people could interpret as movement and being connected at the same time. Um, so that's logo number two, and then there's a logo number three. So um, uh, I guess what I'm looking for from all of you is, you know, if you can connect with me by phone or email um, after this meeting, let me know. You know, do you prefer number one, two, or three? What was most touching to you? What was most meaningful as far as looking like an inviting transportation system? And then, you know, your input on subsets, subsystem names. For example, do you like door to door rides? Do we keep that as the sub name? Again, it would go. 
underneath the main program logo. So where the small print is on the smaller logo options. Um, and also, you know, you've got something that sticks out um, for you as far as a new name for the ADRC system. Um, your input is certainly appreciated. And if you've got anything you want to throw out there now, I've got a pen and paper and I can jot it down real quick. So you don't mind if we tell you now which sure, go right ahead. door we want to pick? Sure. Um, anybody have thoughts? Joel? I like the bottom number three. Number three, same here. I think it's got, it, I mean, just looking at a quick look, that's the first one that pops up. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be DC. Dan? Why do you have transport uh, substances with connect? You know, it doesn't, you know, sometimes we get a little bit too cute that people don't really know what door connect is, but they do know what door transportation is. I think what we're trying to do um, is the word connect would mean the two programs are connected, plus we can get people connected to the community. So like um, what Brooke was thinking, and I, I kind of like it is Door County Connect is the main name, but underneath that, then it's gonna be a subsystem name, you know, um, your community link or public transit or something like that. So it'll be more apparent that it's a transportation service, but the Door County Connect kind of spoke to these programs are connected and now we're connecting to the community. Anybody else? I would go along with Nancy and, and Joel in, in the bottom one. Okay, thank you. It is catchy. Okay. What's the committee's thought on what we're trying to do? So again, I think we're, when, when Pam came on, I think one of the things that we identified when we were looking at the transportation program itself is that there was, it's not an identity crisis, but I think there's confusion on the different entities and what they're all considered. So one of the things that they're trying to do is, again, they're trying to get us to focus. So when we start talking about funding or any of those issues in the future, that people understand, you know, we're one system in a sense. I mean, there's still going to be door tram, but that's separate in that aspect. So what we're trying to do is just get a brand set so that people are starting to have that tied to them and there's not the confusion between the door-to-door -door and then the bus. Because, again, the bus is more than just the, just the one use. So I guess what we're trying to do is just develop that vision of, I guess the program as one, you know, the functions as one, but then again, what you would see on the vans or with, on the, I guess the minivans versus what you'd see in the bus, you'd see a common logo, but then again, you can identify that specialty part of the program with the sub name or a sub catchphrase underneath that. So that's the whole concept, but I think it's, it helps us with our, I guess the identity of the program itself and how it functions in the county. And it's just a more of a longer term solution. So I guess uh, the only thing I want to add is if you're, you know, myself, you're sitting in the parking lot of Walmart, and you see a van rented by, you see any one of them, that's the first thing somebody's eyes are going to go to. They're going to think, oh, I wonder what they do. What are they connecting? What are they transporting? What are they doing? And if you've got the intent of having something underneath it as your subset, to me, it needs to say something in terms of public transport, public transportation, because that's what people are going to connect and say, oh, I need this to call and arrive, take me ready to go. So the term public transport, transportation has to be on the sub. Thank you. Could I ask a quick question just for some input? Um, and again, thank you for your time. I try not to use up too much of it. In, in noting that, Joel, you know, kind of saying public transit, is there any strong feeling as to have needing to have a separate name for the door-to-door -door riding system versus the ADRC system? Are you wanting them to be seen as individual systems yet, two different county programs, or would it be fair to just change them all the door county connect and all of them say public transit? Just throwing that real quick input, top of your thought. Is, it, out there. is there anything that the ADRC used to be known as the senior bus. Is there anything it does different in addition to being part of the? The difference is really the service areas. The ADRC system is tied to the Sturgeon Bay area. You know, it's not part of the different service zones like the door-to-door -door system is. 
And obviously the funding is different and things like that, but yet they're connected. So it, it could just be part of the public transit system, but those particular vehicles stay in this area. You know, because going forward, you're going to want one brochure, one service map out there. You know, perhaps one service is just within another service, and internally, we know which vehicles can go where. Do the riders really need to know that? Do they really need to know if they're in a door to door versus a what used to be an ATRC vehicle? You don't care about that. They just want to get an AMP, and then we'll call. Right, right. I like that idea of a single view. Okay. I do too. When you roll these out or whatever, if there's any way that you can clarify the difference between this and Dortran, because that's the other big confusion out there. People can't figure out how they're connected or how they're not connected and why they're not connected or whatever. Right. Um, I agree with that. That was one thing Ken and I talked about when he threw out a great idea. He said, you know, why not connect Door County so we're not starting with D? But the timing for CDC abbreviation isn't really good. <laughs> right. um, you know, so we're open to that too. This is round one of some logos and some names. So, you know, that could even be as easy as not starting with the word door, you know, because that matches door trans. So, but you're right. I mean, that's another thing. I thought of, you know, your mobility or something like that. Well, door trans take line is your doorway to mobility. So there again, we don't want mobility in any part of the name of the system. So, but definitely that, that will need to be part of it. Other thoughts? Ken? Well, I'll just add, I'll make it a majority of four and go along with, <laughs> I like the bottom one also. Any other comments on any of the things Pam raised? I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Thank you all for your input. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, child support. Grant, did you want to cover this one? I know Rod sounds like you would like, but. The broad white, okay. the resolution uh, starts on page uh, 16 of your packet. It's fairly self-explanatory. Rod will be able to answer any specific questions you have, but compared to its essence, the county would be requesting an increase in the financial support for its uh, child support funding, which has been diminished over the past few years. Hey, Rod, I heard you unmuted if you'd like to add anything. Yeah. There was, there was a change uh, in the middle of last year on how we can claim funding and we get a percentage of the birth cost recovery that we collect from people who have uh, birth costs through uh, Badger Care. We used to be able to get federal match on that. The federal government for some reason just so suddenly decided we can't get federal match on it anymore and that's where the loss of almost four million dollars for the state comes in. So. We're asking the governor to put money in the budget. We're asking the Joint Finance Committee to please put money in their budget. If we don't get it, there's going to be a big shortfall for all the counties, and it's going to be difficult. Questions? No. You don't correct the heading, right? The I is missing from the increased. Yeah, we know that it was okay. Okay. It'll be fixed for county board. What is that? It'll be fixed for county board. What we need today is a motion to forward this to county board. I shall move. Second. Any questions still or other comments on the resolution? Um, well, this was just all of a sudden the federal government changed their policy. Is that how this came about? Yeah, it's actually the state of Michigan's fault. They asked a question they shouldn't have asked. <laughs> and when they got the interpretation of it, they were wondering why Wisconsin was able to do this. And when they got the answer to it, the federal government told Wisconsin, no, you're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, okay, well, 
If there are no other questions, oh, this. Yeah, upon approval, this will be sent to the governor and just the governor, or will it go to our other representatives? A representative, state senator, state rep. Okay, there are in, uh, in the further resolved. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything else? And all in favor of moving this to county board, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Court Counsel. The first thing has to do with yet another notice of the Noble Nelson Stewardship Program grant involving two separate parcels of property in the town of Bailey's Harbor. And I can say to say that these, uh, this has turned into just an FYI. And We've never in my tenure here uh, sent these on the county board for resolution and support or opposition. Maybe one day we will, but I feel compelled to bring that to, me, to your attention as they send me notices as they are required to under the statute. Okay. Any questions for Brent? Okay. Uh, second starts on page 19, continues through page 21. It is resolution number 2019-71, extension of alternative work schedules policy. Remember way back when, before COVID-19, uh, resolution number 2019-71 was adopted on October 29th, 2019. The idea was we were gonna use 2020 as a crowd run for alternative work schedules. Well, guess what, that didn't happen. Uh, what we are requesting is that the uh, resolution and the uh, attached alternative work schedules policy uh, be extended uh, commencing January 1, 2021, and extended through December 31st, 2021, with the hope that we'll be able to actually give it a trial and report back at the end of the next year as the outline. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll try and Nancy, any comments, questions? Yeah, the world looks pretty different with regard to work schedules than it did. Um, all in favor of, of taking Grant's suggestion and forwarding that extension on to come aboard, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And finally, if this is a year-end litigation update, it just might subjective opinion of thing litigation depending on uh, some significance that will continue at least into if not through the next year the first one you've heard about before is the opioid multiple district litigation that is uh, a national prescription opiate litigation that's pending in the u.s uh, district court northern district of ohio eastern division uh, Door County became a part of this litigation at the beginning, and the litigation uh, continues, and as have all these cases been impacted by COVID-19, courts at the federal and state levels are not having in-person courts, and that has slowed the calendar down somewhat, but uh, the opioid litigation is still pending, uh, and I'll report back if there's any significant developments uh, in the coming year. Second one that I think is an example of uh, some of these cases take forever to work their way through the system, aided in part by COVID-19, but the 4A Bluff Development uh, LLC, the Novo Appeal of the Resource Planning Committee's grant of or denial of a, board, of a conditional use permit uh, was sent to the Board of Adjustment. Uh, the parties requested a delay in scheduling the hearing, which worked out well given COVID-19 in an effort to work out a negotiated resolution and that as we sit here today i'm not aware that a negotiated resolution has been worked out and the hearing before the board of adjustment is scheduled for february 2nd 2021 uh, those of you that sit on the resource planning committee you probably remember with, uh, very well the hearings and how long it took before the resource planning committee we can pretty much guarantee the same thing with the Board of Adjustment, so. Any 
questions? Okay. Third one is the novice uh, et al. versus Short County Board of Adjustment. Uh, better known as the Lerickson Campground Conditional Use Permit. Uh, that case is currently pending uh, in the uh, Wisconsin Court of Appeals. It's been fully argued and briefed, and we're simply waiting for a decision from the court. I am cautiously optimistic that that will take place in the first quarter of 2021, but again, sounding like a broken record, COVID-19 has impacted everything across the court system. So, and finally, uh, Camp Zion, there was an appeal. Hold on, Ken. I have a question. I, of course, you hear a lot of things, but I heard that uh, uh, that land is for sale and the owners have given up. On that. If you're talking about the one just south of Jacksonport, yep. that was what I heard. I, I drove by there and I saw a for sale sign on the property. And I asked somebody about that and I forget who I asked. Uh, good thing I forget all that stuff because then I can't be held responsible on it, on somebody else saying anything. But, uh, or so they say. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I was told that the owners are selling it and they have decided to forego the campground. Is that so? Is that fact or fiction? I'm not aware of that. What I am aware of is the owners have an attorney who's actively participated in the appeal. And what one may intuit is that the property may be value, more valuable with a conditional use permit than without, irrespective of whether, whether they're going to proceed or not. Okay, thank sure. you. Okay, and Camp Zion again was a conditional use permit, or excuse me, was a uh, an appeal to the federal courts under our LUPA and the uh, ADA of a decision by the Board of Adjustment on a variance. That case is pending in federal district court in Green Bay and uh, is at the very beginning of, of the litigation. We're not quite sure where it's going to go or how far it's going to go, but uh, there was one other case that I'm aware of in Wisconsin that was up in Oneida County involving an appeal under Arlupa and the ADA. And that case lasted 11 years. So federal court litigation is a little bit different than state court. It tends to linger forever. So, any further questions on all of this for Grant? Okay, moving on to Kelly. Good morning. The first item we discussed, if there aren't any other questions, then I'll move on to the second item. Anything more about the um, changes to the two positions? Okay, go ahead. Plan to dissolve the County Civil Service Commission and record related recruitment and selection processes. So, in the study from the Sheriff's Department, um, there was a recommend, recommendation that they designate the Human Resources Department as having the responsibility for overall recruitment for the Sheriff's Department hiring. Our plan is to put together a form presentation that will discuss the civil service. Um, and the process for hiring going forward and bring that to you in January. So this is really just an FYI. Bring it to admin. Correct. And, but obviously it will go to public safety as well. It will go to public safety and go to admin, I think, depending on who needs first. Um, it should go in that word of public safety admin and then public. Me. Wasn't that a statutorily required serve to be part of the commission to be provided? How could it be dissolved? It, it's an ordinance that the county adopted, so it wasn't required. There, if I may add, there is a statutory provision that allows a county to opt into a civil service commission type model. And just as we opted into it, we have the discretion to opt out. And the report re recommended that the county opt out. Is that right? Correct. Okay, anything else about that? Okay, Kelly. The next item um, is in relation to the handout that you received. This was the order that was adopted on March 16th, 2020. And 
on page three of the order under B as in dog, the supplemental paid leave bank availability. I would like to include updated language um, due to the fact that we didn't know how long this was going to go on. So this kind of makes more sense than just letting us linger. And so what I added was that it would be subject to a 90 day look back period from the date of separation when looking at a day to day um, reduction for approved time used through the bank of SPL. Okay, so let me make sure I followed what you said. Sure. The, is the whole section D new? It's not new. I just added um, that it be subject to a 90 day look back instead of just left open until COVID ends. So, because we don't know when that's going to be. So, I added a clarifying statement. The last bullet? Yep. Correct. And it's all new. Okay. Correct. So maybe the best explanation is that if you recall, we added additional additional leave called for special leave bank in response to COVID. So if someone had an issue or let's say they have to either a positive test or quarantine, they could use that bank of time and use it and not have to burn down their PTO. The SPL was if they just not paid out to PTO if you separate the leave. I guess what we're trying to do is again, this was an incentive we added to our employees to be able to help them through the situation they're dealing with. But again, if they're what we're trying to say is that well, if you're still if you end up leaving within 90 days to use that time, we think that it's fair that you apply your PTO versus the SPL because as an added bank for your long-term employment and being able to use your PTO in the future. Not that people have done it, but there's been Individuals that kind of pushed that envelope saying they're just going to apply their STL because they wanted to save their PTO and get paid out of their PTO for retirement or when they separate. And that was not our intent. Our intent was to be able to help the employees, not supplement additional payment for their separation. So that's why we're doing the look back period of the 90 days. If it gets past 90 days, it's whatever they do, it's it's past that 90 days and it's whatever on the books is, is done. But if they separate within that 90 day window of using all their SPL, we want to be able to at least to try to get some of that PTO off, off the books versus not having to pay the both of them. Questions? I'm trying to get my head. During or 90 days. And the look back period means just, does it mean just that you look at it and decide, or does it mean it's an automatic? All right, so, so let's just walk through an example. You know, Bobby Jones has four weeks of PTO on the books. They also have the 120 hours SPLs. They, they go through and they use two weeks of their SPL, and then the next month they decide to retire or separate. What we're doing is that since we look back 90 days to use the SPL, instead of still paying them out for the four weeks of PTO that's on the books, we're going to take two weeks of that PTO and apply it back to the SPL. And we're going to pay them out two weeks instead of the four weeks. Mainly because they separated within that 90 day window of using the SPL. Again, the, and the reason, again, the reason why we're doing that was that the whole idea of the SPL was to help the employee, I guess, one, before the federal. Yeah, was, it was before the federal leave was on, but it's, it was supposed to help supplement the employee long term, not having to use up all their PPO and again provide a long term benefit to the employee. And so again, it was not it was not intended as a benefit to supplement their retirement or separation and pay out of their PPO. So we're trying to find that balance. And if you choose not to do any look back, that's the that's why we're here discussing it. That's fine. But just so you know that's what we're experiencing. With employees leaving and some of that stuff, and we're experiencing that cost because you're actually paying it off. So, so that's why we're recommending those look back period of 90 days. Okay, so maybe I'm just not getting that phrase look back, but but it it, it wouldn't be optional to be decided 
It would just, that's what would happen. Correct. So if you if you put in your retirement date today, we're going to go from this date, we're going to go back three months. If you use S, if you have SPL in the, in the within that three month window, if you have SPL that you use, if you have matching PTL, we're going to do a one on one match of PTL within that 90 day window. Anybody have thoughts, questions? Keep everybody honest. Okay, so today we are making a decision, or this is an FYI that we're considering, or who are we forwarding this to county board for approval? Or was the order approved, or just it just is? No, the order was approved by the first resolution, which would be 2020 19 so uh, there would have to be a resolution going forward approving this change. So it would be an amendment to the board. Correct. And that's what we need to do today is what you're saying. So I would make a motion to approve the amendment of the order and send the county board. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? This upon approval at county board, when would it become effective? Immediately? Yes, unless it's uh, indicated otherwise. You know, this is probably a weird example, but what I envisioned when I first heard this is a person gets sick with COVID, is using the SPL, and then because of how sick they are, they have to terminate. Then do we go back and I, I mean, I it, it, it's different than playing a game if they really, really are sick and because of their illness, they have to. But I don't know. I mean, I'm throwing that out there as the example that flashed in my head. Um, I just throw it out there for whatever reason. Okay, any further discussion? This yes. one, think, how many, can I ask how many people potentially would this affect? Well, it would be all the employees, but it just affects people that would be looking at separation or employment, which could only be maybe one or two or three. Correct. Well, yeah, it depends on what we get for our retirement. So we know that there's some planning parts to. The beginning of the new year, so like that, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not going to be widespread. It's just when they separate employment. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? If not, all in favor of forwarding a resolution to make this change to county board. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Yeah. The next item is a request to refill, which is on page 22 of your package for the deputy clerk of the board. And this is an internal movement um, position. So it reads it vacant. I'll make a motion to fill that position. Second. In Nancy Biz. Discussion? All in favor of refilling the position, say aye. 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 Closed. Okay. The next request is for our facility supervisor. He's taken on another role in another area of the county, and so that makes this position vacant. Well, I'm glad you clarified that because I'm on your time. Okay. Um, is there a motion to? Welcome. Okay, Dan. Is there a second? Nancy? Um, discussion? All right, all in favor of refilling the facility supervisor position, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, both of these uh, motions didn't include uh, people of the post up from their job that we build the this post up from. Oh, yes, yes. Should they? Uh, yeah, they could. That would be appropriate for the facility supervisor. But the way I think of the board. I don't know what the deputy clerk can do. All right, so one new, new motion. Yeah, I think that is my motion. Okay, Nancy, I think you were the second, right? Yeah, so that okay. All right, um, 
Go ahead, Kelly, with the next one. And the last request to be filled is for the zoning administrator, assistant sanitary for land use services. This is due to a retirement. And we're asking for um, an, an earlier hire for this position, um, just to give you some background. We had another person leave a few months ago. They did some interviewing and they found two potential candidates. One we offered the position to and they accepted and there's ready. And they would like permission to bring on the second person early so that they can train both of them and have them up and running at the same time when the disease season starts. And what I mean by early is like a mid January. I'll make a motion. We uh, uh, we fill that zoning administrator assistant sanitarian position. Second. Um, discussion. I'm assuming the cost of their salaries is budgeted. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of refilling that position, and we don't have to do subsequent there. Yeah. Do. Okay. Say aye. Opposed? Okay. And then personnel transaction. Any comments or questions about the personnel? Page 37. Okay. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Matters to be placed on a future agenda. We'll refer to committee, official, or employee. Anyone? Um, I, I think we should discuss keeping the current acting chairman in her position because the meetings seem to go by a lot quicker. Well, I was just going to say you might want to fight me because <laughs> it's getting off too fast. Um, okay, so vouchers, claims, and bills, anything? All right, next meeting date 10 a.m. at any rate, 19. In a, in a new year, at last. <laughs> okay, so meeting per diem code as coached by Mr. Austed is 128. 128? Yep, today is the 8th, right? Yep. That being said, there's no further business be transacted. Madam Chairperson, I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, a second? Nancy. <laughs>